Today I want to talk to you a little bit about preservatives. I'm going to tell you guys three common misconceptions about preservatives. I'm going to tell you the two main types of preservatives. And I'm going to tell you how you can ensure the products that you purchase are properly preserved. My name is Sharon. Welcome back to my channel. Make sure you guys subscribe below and turn on notifications to get the latest updates. Okay, so let's get started. A quick cultural tip. If you are ever in a Spanish-speaking country, don't talk about preservatives at the dinner table. It's definitely not a polite topic of conversation. I feel like I also need to give you guys a little bit of a disclaimer. I do not have um, a scientific background. I'm not a formulator. I am not a chemist. I do not work in the beauty industry. I have simply found out this information by doing research to figure out what works for myself and my family. I always encourage you guys to do your own research too and figure out what works for you. So let's talk about the number one uh, common misconception and that is that preservatives are bad. Now I believe this got started with parabens. Parabens have a bad reputation. Now whether or not you think parabens are good or evil, whether you use them or not, I think that everybody needs to understand that the original study done on parabens was inherently flawed. So what they did um, is they tested um, cancerous tissue, found parabens in it, came to the conclusion that parabens cause cancer. Um, now there are issues with this study. It was a very small sample size, and in addition to that, they did not test the healthy tissue. So they have no idea whether or not there were parabens in the healthy tissue. Like who's to say there were not more parabens in the healthy tissue than the cancerous tissue? Um, I don't really want to make this video about parabens. I do want to talk about preservatives. And the, the job that preservatives have is to keep natural uh, things from growing in your product. And now I know a lot of people think of natural and nature as bunnies and butterflies and rainbows and all these happy things, but what they are forgetting is that nature can be vicious. There are plenty of things in nature that can harm you or kill you. You have natural disasters. You have uh, poisonous plants like poison oak or, or poison ivy. You have even things that you know seem like they could be harmless like peanuts that can have um, disaster devastating effects on people. So natural simply means that something is not synthetic. Um, and the things that are going to grow in your product are 100% natural um, and they can grow in food products or beauty products and those are bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungus. And bacteria is um, gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. Um, as much as I love freebies, um, as you've seen by my previous videos, I don't want to use a product then open up and find out um, there are free microorganisms growing in my product. Um, and you'll notice I said microorganisms. These are microscopic. And I know that some people say, you know, my product looks good or it smells good, it must be fine. That's not necessarily true. Well, I have no doubt in my mind that there are certain gifted people who do have the ability to uh, smell da uh, like disease or sickness, things like that. They have a very, very strong sense of smell. The majority of us are not like that. And as for seeing something, by the time you see it, um, between the time that it started to grow, um, there's going to be a gap. And now how long that gap is, is going to depend on um, a handful of other uh, things, such as the environment. So in a hot, humid environment, there's going to be a smaller gap from when it starts to grow until you can see it. Um, and you do need microscopes to see this. Now, the two main types of products that need preservatives are, the first type is the, the ones that have water or are water-based. So if water is listed in your product or if there's a water-based ingredient such as aloe vera, you are going to need a preservative most of the time. I know that some people talk about the hurdle method um, and that is kind of controversial. I'm going to put a link below and you guys can check that out. Um, but if the main ingredient is water or something that's water-based like aloe vera, you are going to need um, a preservative unless you're going to be making it and using it like right away. The second category is products that will come in contact with water. And now let me give you a very simple example, a sugar scrub. Uh, lots of people make sugar, sugar scrubs, um, homemade sugar scrubs, they're so easy, they even give them as gifts, you know, like it's, it's the holiday season. Um, please be careful if you're going to use these as gifts. So all you need is sugar and oil or salt and oil. You mix those together, you put them in a container and ta-da, you have um, a scrub, a body scrub. Now the problem with this is if you are like me or most people, they take that little container and they stick it in their shower and then when they're showering, as the water is dripping all over the shower, they stick their wet hands in the, um, the product um, and then they rub that all over their body and they might double dip as well. 
Once you have water introduced into your product, you do have the, the chance that something, some microorganism is going to be growing in it. So you have a couple choices if you're going to be using salt or sugar scrubs. You can either make smaller amounts, much, much smaller amounts, like one-time use amounts, or you can make a batch and then keep that outside of your shower, outside of your bathroom. Bathrooms are not good places to store things. Um, and then scoop a little bit onto you know, a dish or in a cup or something and use that amount um, when you're in the shower and then any leftovers, throw it away. So that is the first common misconception that preservatives are bad. Let's go to the second one and that is all preservatives are created equal. This is not true. There are broad spectrum uh, preservatives and these are preservatives that are used to prevent bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungus. And there's preservatives that can only be used for um, one or two of those. There's also preservatives that interact with certain ingredients um, and you can look those up if you are interested in that but there's certain preservatives that cannot be used with other ingredients. Um, along with the type of preservative is the amount that you use. So preservatives usually have a range of percentage that goes into your product um, and you calculate this based on weight. And if you are going to be making products at home, um, I have a link for you guys, um, and this woman recommends you err on the higher side. And that is because the majority of us, when we make products in our home, we're just making it in our kitchen. Um, it's not a sterile environment. We're definitely not decked out in, in any gear or anything like that. So you should try to go on the higher side. Um, the third um, common misconception is that once a preservative has been tested, um, then you're done. You don't have to do it anymore. Um, this is not true. Natural products vary greatly batch to batch. So if a company creates a product um, and they test that, that product and they find out that, you know, pass the test, nothing's growing in it, you know, they think that we're good to, they're good to go. That's not true. Once they're done with that batch and they create a new batch, they also need to test that one to make sure that it's okay. So those are the three common misconceptions. The number one is that preservatives are bad. The number two is that they're all created equal. And the number three is that, you know, once you test it, you never have to test it again. Now let's talk about the two main types of preservatives. And those can quickly be broken down into natural and synthetic. And most natural preservatives, um, there are fewer uh, options available if you want to go the natural preservatives route and you are probably more likely to have to use a couple preservatives. So as I talked about pre uh, previously, you have broad spectrum preservatives and those protect against bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungus. And you have ones that um, you know just protect against a few of those things. Um, and so if you have uh, a natural preservative, even the ones that are said to be broad spectrum, um, they kind of are controversial. I'm gonna put some links below and you guys can check it out. Um, they do have shorter shelf lives as well. Um, so those are the two main types, whether you're using uh, natural or synthetic. Now, lastly, I want to talk about how you can ensure the products that you purchase are properly preserved. Um, and I really get grossed out every time I see companies that say, you know, no preservatives added. That just grosses me out, especially once they have um, water in it, because um, I know that their products are not safely made. And the FDA... Uh, does kind of regulate the industry, but anybody can create a company and sell a product um, before the FDA gets to them if they ever get to them. So what I encourage you guys to do is contact the company directly. Now be aware when you do this, you might make somebody uh, upset. Like I personally, um, I know when I contact a company, I try to be as diplomatic as possible. I just ask them, you know, about preservatives and things like that. And I have had a lot of great experience. People um, write back to me right away. They, they give me information. They've given me um, PDFs, links to other things. And I have had companies um, just downright block me. Um, and when they do, I know that their products are not properly preserved. So I would encourage you guys to ask a company if they do challenge testing. So what challenge testing is, is you take, and it's done, it should be done in a third party independent lab, is they take this product and they challenge it um, to make sure that you're not getting the bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungus from growing in it. Um, and it's usually done for 28 days. Sometimes they do it shorter for 14 days. Some companies, you know, do it longer. The reason that companies are not doing this is because it costs money. They're trying to cut corners um, or save money. Um, and these challenge testing are called PET or PET, and it's preservative efficacy testing. So you are testing the preservative to make sure that it works. 
And like I mentioned in my common misconceptions, it can be difficult for small businesses because they have to test these, um, these products. And once they test it and they get the all clear, the next time they make another batch, they have to test it again. Um, and that can be difficult, especially with natural products that have much shorter shelf lives, um, like a few months compared to a few years. Um, but those should be done. So write to companies and your, your count, your, um, vote with your wallet. Let companies know that, you know, natural isn't just good enough. It also has to be properly preserved. So I told you guys a little bit about preservatives. I told you the three common misconceptions and the two main types of preservatives and also how you can ensure that your products that you purchase are properly preserved. Now, if you are making your own products, um, I would just encourage you guys to use the higher amount of preservatives and use them as quickly as possible. If you have the money to send them to a lab, um, and if you're selling your products, you definitely should. Um, but other than that, just be smart with the way that you are producing your uh, products. So now I want to hear from you guys. Let me know your opinion on preservatives. If I've explained anything that might have been surprising in the video, also let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. Please like this video and give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to get the latest updates. I'll see you guys later.